Each man had a special job to do, and as soon as he finished it, he moved on to the next car and did the same thing there. They began to improve it, refine it. They rolled the chassis down a single line of track, pushing it from crew to crew. It's the early 1900s. It's been over 20 years since the first production car was built by Carl Benz. Horses are still the most important form of transportation. Only the wealthy can afford gas-powered cars. The Model T Ford started production in 1908, completely changing the world forever. Welcome back folks. In this video, we are going to go over the history of the Model T Ford. The Model T used an inline four-cylinder, 2.9-liter flathead engine. The cylinders were cast into the block. This style of engine was uncommon for the time, but the Model T Ford was all about mass production, and this method was much faster to produce. The cylinder head was also cast iron, and it was removable. Compression ratio was about 4 to 1. This means you could burn just about anything in there. Gasoline, kerosene, and ethanol were common. The Model T Ford got between 13 and 21 miles per gallon. On most Model T Fords, the gas tank was under the seat. It held 10 gallons. It was a gravity-fed system, meaning that there was no fuel pump. There is a lever under the fuel tank to turn on the fuel. Fuel runs into the sediment bowl, through the fuel line, and into the carburetor. Using nothing but gravity, the carburetor was very simple. It was a side draft carburetor. A few different brands of carburetors were used on the Model T, including Holly, Zenith, and Kingston. They had no accelerator pumps, like in later carburetors. The Model T Ford's cooling system was very simple compared to modern cars, or even classic cars. The cooling system wasn't even pressurized like it is today. If you were to go out there on your hot car and open the radiator cap, you're getting boiling hot coolant in your face. But that wasn't the case for the Model T. When the Model T first came out, it did have a water pump to assist with water flow, but Ford dropped the water pump pretty quickly. The Model T used thermosiphon circulation to cool the engine. The engine would heat up, causing the water or coolant in the cylinder head and engine passages to rise to the upper radiator hose and into the radiator. The water was cooled by air passing through the radiator by the fan when idling and by the fan and forward movement when being driven. It would go back through the lower radiator hose into the engine. This method of engine cooling had its flaws, especially when idling. The fan was the only thing drawing the air through the radiator to cool the water. It was common for people to bring water with them in case their Model T boiled over. Many people would add an aftermarket water pump to aid with water flow. The same problem would occur if the water wasn't cooled enough by the airflow, or if the water traveled through the radiator too quickly. The ignition system on a Model T Ford had two ways of providing spark to the engine by the magneto or by a battery. It was very hard to start a cold engine off of the magneto, so there was an option to hook up a battery to the coil box. Before starting the engine, you needed to turn on the gas. Turn the ignition on depending if you're using the magneto or the battery. Retard the spark with a lever on the left side of the steering wheel. You need to apply the choke with a choke wire down at the bottom of the radiator. You had to increase the throttle. The throttle lever was on the right side of the steering wheel. The Model T had no gas pedal like in modern cars. Then you're ready to hand crank the engine. When cranking the engine you had to cup your hand and keep your thumb under the handle in case the engine kicked back. It could break your wrist. Most all of the Model T's were equipped with starters after 1919. But they all still had the option to hand start the engine. But before 1919, you had to hand crank your engine if you wanted to get it started. After it started, you could let the choke out and advance the spark. 
If you were using a battery, you could switch it over to Magneto. Then, you were ready to drive. Compared with a modern car with an automatic transmission, a Model T was much, much more complicated to operate. Obviously, the starting process we just went over is much more labor intensive than just the turn of a key or press of a button. After you had your Model T fired up, your family loaded up for a nice Sunday drive. You had to put the Model T in gear. The Model T had two forward gears and a reverse. You had three pedals between your feet and a parking brake lever to your left. The left pedal engaged high gear, neutral, and low gear. The middle pedal was reverse, and the right pedal was your transmission brake. The Model T did not have hydraulic brakes, like you see in classic or modern cars. To get the Model T into low gear, you needed to move the parking brake lever from the back position to the middle position of the car. It is still in neutral until you press the left pedal to the floor. Now you are in low gear. When it's time to put your transmission in high gear, you need to press the floor lever all the way forward and release the pedal all the way back. Now you are in high gear. The parking brake needs to be all the way forward or else you cannot engage high gear. Again, there's no gas pedal. You have to control the throttle by a lever on the right of the steering wheel. All the way at the top is the lowest throttle and all the way down is your highest throttle. Now you're cruising around on your nice Sunday drive and let's say a deer jumps out in front of you and you need to stop. What do you do? First, you need to get the left pedal into the middle position, which is neutral, and then apply the brake. To put the Model T in reverse, the left pedal needed to be held in the neutral position, right in the middle. Then you can press on the middle pedal, which is reverse. Release the metal pedal and press the brake down slowly while holding the left pedal in neutral to stop. Compared to today, that is a much, much more complicated process. You got three pedals and none of them are a gas pedal. Like with anything, it just took them a little bit of time to learn the process. The Model T had 30 inch wheels with wood spoke tires. The rear tires were three and a half inches wide and the fronts were three inches wide. It had a hundred inch wheelbase. The Model T came in many different body styles. The two door touring from 1909 to 1911, three door touring 1912 to 1925, four door touring 1926 to 1927, the no door roadster 1909 to 1911, one door roadster 1912 to 1925, two door roadster 1926 to 1927, Roadster Pickup, 1925 to 1927, Two Door Coupe, 1909 to 1912, then 1914 to 1927, Two Door Couplet, 1915 to 1917, Town Car, 1909 to 1918, Sea Cab Wagon, 1912, Two Door Sedan, 1924 to 1927, Four Door Sedan, 1923 to 1927. If there's one quote that almost everybody knows about Henry Ford, it's this one. Any customer can have a car painted any color that he wants, so long as it is black. But first, that was not the case from 1908 to 1913. You could buy one in gray, green, blue, or red, depending on your body style. But it wasn't until 1914 when that quote came true. Every Model T was painted black. Theories persist about why this happened. Many believe that it was due to black paint having a faster drying time, or due to the fact that black paint was one of the cheapest paints available. There is no evidence to suggest that the black paint dried any quicker, but certain black paints definitely were cheaper. But having only one color of paint to worry about sure made one heck of a quick assembly line. No need to worry about customers orders or exactly what color or combination they want slap it on and get it out the door that's what henry ford was all about quick slap it together get her together move move he took the assembly line to a whole different direction mass production was henry ford's bread and butter that's what it was all about henry ford was not the first to implement the assembly line in car production but he was definitely the most productive 
and the cost definitely implemented this. The price of the Model T Ford plummeted after the assembly line and mass production started in the Model T. In 1908, when the Model T Ford first came out, it was $850, which is just over $20,000 in modern money. $20,000 for a car? That's not the bottom of the barrel, but it sure isn't even damn near close to the highest car you can get today. That's your average, like, Volkswagen Jetta. In 1924, the price dropped to $290 for a brand new Model T Ford. That's just over five grand in 2024 money. That's insane. They got their prices down from just over 20 grand to just over $5,000 in modern money. Imagine that. What kind of car could you buy brand new today for $5,000? You can't. Not in America, you can't. Not for that. Not for a brand new full-size car. Nope. Not gonna happen ever. Not in America these days. That just shows how productive the assembly line system was. The fact that Henry Ford could sell a car for under $6,000 and still make some kind of a profit it's just unbelievable. The price to buy a Model T Ford dropped over $15,000 in modern money from 1908 to 1924. The cheapest price that the Model T ever dropped to was $260. By the end of its life, the Model T was over $300, but still an extreme drop from its $850 price tag when it came out in 1908. With what research I could do, the cheapest car I could find was for $16,000 new today, right now in America. That's like bottom of the barrel, cheapest I can find, just over $16,000. And we have assembly lines and mass production and all that stuff today. The Model T Ford was sold so affordable that your average citizen could actually afford one. They didn't have to sell their soul to the bank in order to get a loan to buy a car like you do today. They could just walk in there with the equivalent of $5,000 in their pocket, pick up a Model T, and walk out the door. The Model T served as a car, fire truck, police car. They were even turned into tractors and armored cars. Model Ts were everywhere. Farmers loved Model Ts. Many aftermarket conversions were made to turn your Model T Ford into a tractor. The wheel of your Model T could be removed and a pulley and belt could be added, turning it into a generator, water pump, conveyor belt, sawmill. The possibilities were endless. The Model T wasn't just a car for people out in the countryside. It helped them with survival. They swapped the rear tires with metal tractor tires to pull plows, snow tracks on in the winter, or even use the Model T on the railroad as a rail car. If you could do it, the Model T was turned into it. They were delivery trucks, taxis, billboards, you name it, the Model T's been there and done that. In 1908, the Model T took off slow. Only 11 cars were built the first month of production. By 1910, 12,000 Model T's had been made. Henry Ford started bringing in machines and he started the moving assembly line in 1913. The time from start to finish for building a Model T was 12 hours and 30 minutes. By 1914, that time dropped to just 93 minutes start to finish and out the door. Just over an hour and a half to completely build a Model T Ford and get it out the door. Even 12 hours and 30 minutes seems fast in my head, but the fact that they can kick them out the door in just an hour and a half. Unbelievable. When America entered World War I, production numbers would drop slightly. In 1917, Ford made over 700000 and the price rose from $345 to $500. In 1918, 650000 were made, and in 1919, just under 500000 were made. A Model T came off the assembly line every three minutes. Ford had produced more cars than every other car maker put together. By 1924, half of all the cars in the world were a Model T Ford. In 1925, over 9,000 Model Ts came off the assembly line every day. The price was only $260, so low that Henry Ford barely made a profit at that price. 
By 1927, 15 million Model Ts had been made, a record at the time. Ford chose to stop producing them and switch over to the Model A Ford. It took until 1972 until the Volkswagen Beetle passed the Model T Ford's record of 15 million cars made. It is by far one of, if not the most influential car of the 20th century, bringing the car to the average worker and bringing on mass production to America. Ford didn't invent the car and it didn't invent mass production, but it sure made one hell of a bang showing what the car was capable of. I want to thank you all for watching people. I hope you enjoyed. I sure had fun making this video to show where we came from in the late 1800s switching over to the 1900s. It's just a roller coaster. Production took off, cars took off. It was just night and day difference from just 20 years earlier. Thank you for watching again. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.